the stay, Mom. I love you. Happy Mother's Day! 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 To all the women in Mosaic, we think you are the best. Fantastic! Happy Mother's Day! Good morning everyone and welcome to our Mosaic Church Online. We're so pleased that you are joining us this morning. And to all our amazing mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. We celebrate you today. Whether you are a mum with young children at home or you're caring for older children or teenagers, whether you're a mum to adult children, a grandmother, an auntie, or like many of us, you make it your mission to reach out and encourage and nurture as a true mother in the faith. Even if you feel unseen and uncelebrated, let me assure you today that you are seen and celebrated in heaven. So well done. As Galatians 6 tells us, let us not lose heart in doing good for in due season we will reap if we do not grow weary. You know, there's a lot of doom and gloom in the world right now, isn't there? But my Bible, my Bible tells me that in the presence of our King, there is fullness of joy and life. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So let's step right into the presence of our King right now and worship him together. So thank you, worship team.
testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony.
praise to you, God. Yes, we do. Receive our praise. You are worthy. My heart will proclaim You are good as you are You are good In the sun rain My life celebrates You are good as you are You are good With a cry With a cry My heart will you are good, you are good, and in the sun rain, my life celebrates, you are good, you are Father, you are good. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. 
Wow, what a great time of worship again. We just appreciate your team, the worship team and media team and all that you do for us, just to help us come again into the presence of God as we have this morning. I trust you're blessed and I trust that right now the Holy Spirit is very much evident where you are watching this service from. Well, I need to say, Happy Mother's Day. I know Helen has already mentioned this, but you know, I just want to give a great shout out to all you moms, grandmothers, and whatever position you're in, you know, we just want to say, hey, we want to celebrate you today. And those who may not be natural moms, but are mothers in the house of the Lord, or actually looking after children and influencing them some way, we shout out to you a great big thank you this morning. We celebrate you, and uh, we know that God is everything to you this day. So celebrate well, and I trust that many things are done for you moms today by your kids, and while your husbands also receive that blessing too. Anyway, as we've already just said, it's great to have everybody with us this morning. And just want to remind you tonight, Mosaic at six, and you can key into that on Facebook or YouTube channel. And it'd be great to have you along. These are great conversations that are taking place on a Sunday evening where you can invite your friends and guests and just hear what God's word is saying to us today in a very practical format. So Mosaic at six this evening. Also straight after this service, Mosaic Kids at midday and uh, Naomi and the boys and the, the rest of the workers. I know they've got something special today with it being Mother's Day. So key in straight after this service and that would be great. I also want to encourage you today. I know we're hopefully gradually walking out of the pandemic now and as a church we're looking at when we can have in-person services we're working hard behind the scenes to put a right plan together so i'm sure that you'll be hearing more from us in just the next few weeks how we do that but also today we want to encourage each of you to connect you know you can connect through many different ways through connect groups through sunday morning online through mosaic a six study hour idy also Mosaic Kids, hey, don't just sit at home and watch. We're still be in church and we want to encourage you to connect. And this morning, again, you can connect through the website mosaicchurch.co.uk forward slash connect. And there's all different ways there where you can just key in and we can continue to be church in these days. Well, let's see what's going on in the life of Mosaic right now. More stories. Let's be blessed. So I've spent my whole life in church on Mother's Day listening to all the amazing mums around me and it's a bit crazy for me today that I actually get to join the mums and so for me being a mum or at least preparing to be a mum in June the one thing that has kind of stuck out for me is that it's all just one big adventure from feeling him kick for the first time or um, creating his nursery or just preparing for his arrival it's all just been one big adventure it means getting up to what can only be described as a war zone clothes food cups and toys everywhere it means running a 24-hour laundrette and cafe 
My children are always hungry. It means playing taxi driver to what bit used to be a very busy social life. It means hiding in the kitchen to eat biscuits because the last thing I said to them was, if you're hungry, you can have fruit. It means playing referee to whose turn it is to sit in the front of the car. Who's taking up the most space? This could go on. In this household, along with being um, a sock picker-upper, a timer of the Xbox, announcer when it's time to turn off, um, bed maker and various other things. I think probably more importantly than those things, I think being a mum for me is about holding and shaping and protecting and providing and cheering on, being the best cheerleader I can be, to teach him about who he is, but also who God says he is, so that he can thrive both now and in the future. Being a mum to me, <laughs> never having a moment to yourself but appreciating everything that bit more about life <laughs> but for me it's all about love and they give me a glimpse into what the father's love looks like it says in one john what great love the, fa the father has lavished on us that we can be called children of god and i love that because my kids they definitely give me a glimpse into what god's love is it was becoming a mum that really made me understand god's sacrifice for us before i was a parent i didn't really get it i thought wouldn't it be more of a sacrifice for god himself to go through all that pain and suffering but as soon as i became a mum i totally got it I can't imagine watching one of my children going through what God watched Jesus go through. And I think that for me, that's what being a mum is all about. Being a mum to adults, I think for me, is being a sounding board, is being there for them to share their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations with. I think as a mum, my role is to call out who they are in God, their gifting, their talents that God has already put in there. I think it's helping them to become spiritually resilient and to become people that love God with all their heart, mind, soul and strength. Chauffeur, cleaner, events organiser, courier, seamstress, PA, researcher, coach, hairdresser, banker, personal shopper, chef, counsellor, manager, spy, consultant, diplomat, artist, carer, nurse, the list just goes on and on. But you know what? I absolutely love being a mum. It's, it's everything. The children know they are the most precious things in my life. They are the best thing I've ever done in my life. I've realised I've kept so many Mother's Day cards and little gifts and notes and pictures and drawings of the children from when they were little right through as they've grown and they are they're everything and listening to the mums today has made me that much more excited for the next part of this adventure as i get to um hold him for the first time or experience all his firsts or even the dreaded sleepless nights and dirty nappies that everyone's been warning me about and so for me, the phrase that kind of has stuck out is that it's just one big, crazy and exciting adventure. And I cannot wait to meet our son in June. But after all the fun and chaos of the day, when saying goodnight, I know I am blessed to have them. How proud they make me feel to be their mum. As I turn out the light, counting my blessings, I hear from behind the door, Mum, I forgot to say, tomorrow is Egyptian dress up day. Easter is just around the corner and I am here to tell you all about what's going on at Mosaic Church over the Easter weekend. So first of all, on Friday the 2nd of April, we will be hosting a Good Friday communion service from the Hope Centre at 4pm. This will be a Covid secure in-person gathering and due to government guidelines there will be a very limited number of seats available. So if you wish to attend, make sure that you book your seat today at mosaicchurch.co.uk forward slash Easter. We will also be hosting online Zoom communion services within our connect groups. So make sure that you contact your connect group leader or check your connect group WhatsApp chat for the link and the time of your online communion gathering. If you are not already in the connect group, then make sure you contact Wes Longdon and he will get you connected in ready for the communion gatherings. If that's not enough, then on Easter Sunday, we will be going live from the Hope Centre for our online church service. 
The team have been working hard behind the scenes to live stream to your telly, your iPad, your laptop, your mobile, whichever way it is that you watch online church. So make sure that you tune in at 11am on YouTube or Facebook to catch our live Easter Sunday service. Now I know that is a lot of information to take in. So if you go to mosaicchurch.co.uk forward slash Easter, you will find everything you need to know there. I'm so excited to celebrate Easter with you all. Whether that's in person, on Zoom or on YouTube, it's going to be a great weekend and I cannot wait to see you all then. Well, what great stories and also just honouring mums this morning. Just a great opportunity for us to be church. Well, next week you probably realise that we're coming to a year where we've not gathered together. So next Sunday is going to be a really special Sunday as we, I wouldn't say celebrate, but remember all that God has done over this past year. And he has done much. So make sure you key into that too. Also right now, I just want to read a scripture to you. And it's found in 2 Corinthians 9, 6, 8. It says, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. You know, this scripture here, I don't know about you, but it encourages me to make sure that what I have, I don't possess. In other words, I'm a steward of what God gives me. And I also have to make sure that as a steward, that which flows into me financially as gifts in any way that also can flow out of me as he requires. So often it is with treasures or things that we treasure so much, hard to let go. I'm reminded that when we give, we give a gift this morning, not a loan. The difference being that a loan has attachments to it. And sometimes when we give even unto the Lord, we sometimes have these emotional conditions in our minds and in our hearts that, well, I, I hope this happens with the money. I, I want that to happen. You know, when we give a gift, we have to let go of the emotional ties to that gift and say, I've given a gift. I now also give the responsibility of that gift to who I'm giving it to. That's why as church leaders, you know, we have a great responsibility before God to be good stewards of what God gives us and make sure it's used for the extending of God's kingdom and the blessing of people's lives. I want to thank you again for those who've continually given. This is a church that worships through its giving. Mosaic, thank you. If you're a guest this morning, we don't feel, don't feel any obligation to give. We just want you with us. But part of our worship, as the Bible instructs us, is to give of our finances and this morning, again, as we're in this service, I want to give you opportunity. And there's different ways you can give. It will come up on the screen. But mosaicchurch.co.uk forward slash give gives you all the different ways where you can give this morning. And let's be generous in our giving because everything that is sown can reap a great harvest for God. Amen. Well, it's my privilege right now to introduce our speaker this morning. Uh, Leah Bowden is going to talk again around the theme of thriving and priesthood, but talking about how we can thrive in our home life. You know, being a Christian isn't just for Sundays. It's every part of our lives. And knowing Christ and Christ knowing us wants to influence us in every way. So, Leah, we're looking forward to what you've got to share with us now. Let's listen intently. Amen. Good morning, Mosaic, and a very happy Mother's Day. Well, I'm not sure how many of you felt enthralled by the title today, Thriving in Your Home, after mostly being at home for 12 months now. Or maybe you feel like an expert, like you've got this down, so come on, let's just move on. We couldn't really deliver a series on thriving without talking about God's intention and his heart for the home. The place where we live with our people, where we welcome the Holy Spirit every day. And normally we invite other people into the rooms of our homes and especially around our table. Those days are coming back soon. 
Now, we know from looking at the book of Acts about the early church, we can study that period of history and we have an understanding that the early believers met around teaching and worship in each other's homes. Some of these homes are mentioned specifically in the Bible, um, especially the house of Aquila and Priscilla. In Paul's letter to the Corinthians, they send their greetings. It says, Aquila and Priscilla greet you much in the Lord, along with the church that is in their house. Homes were and are important to the understanding and expansion of the kingdom of God. And your home is not less important than anyone else's. God's not bothered if you have farrow and ball paint on the walls or you've grabbed the Wilco's weekend special or if you happen to have Marie Kondo'd all your cupboards. I do have that book, but she completely lost me at only keep 30 books. Uh, yeah, if you know me, that struggle is real. Totally respect the idea though. I'm not going to advise you on cleaning or decluttering or decorating. You can go to YouTube or Mrs Hinch for that. But I do want to remind you that whether you live in a dorm room, a high rise flat, a city terrace, or you're squeezing your babes into bunk beds, or even if there's space for all of us at your house, God dwells in the place where you lay your head. That place that you're proud of, where you water your plants, you listen to your favourite music loud in the kitchen, you chat to the neighbours, you fix the leaks, and you cook food for your family. So don't hide behind what you want for the future, but let's thrive in the place we woke up in this morning. Assuming, of course, no one is in the wrong house and no one is on holiday, obviously, due to COVID. So let's declare, like the psalmist did in Psalm 16, the land you have given me is a pleasant land. What a wonderful inheritance. Let's begin from a place of contentment, just like the Apostle Paul, who learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Well, as many of you know, we live right on a city council park. We love it. There's basically a hedge between our front garden and the morning dog walkers, kids walking to school and the walk to work commuters. And our home is pretty much surrounded by trees, at least on one side. And at this time of the year, the bird life is lively and loud as we see them getting ready to build their nests and to create a place to produce their offspring. Now this year, I've paid particular attention to two types of bird. You'll know them both. One is the very friendly robin redbreast. The other is the all common pigeon. So I've watched the robins work in pairs from my kitchen window. From sun up to sundown, they're collecting dead leaves, passing them to each other and purposefully flying to one particular tree where they're obviously constructing their grand design. The pigeon, on the other hand, he's an interesting fellow. I see him mostly alone a couple of times a day, usually, you know, early afternoon, cup of coffee time, with a thin twig in his mouth, aimlessly looking around for a landing spot to build. Pigeons are notorious for building terrible nests in trees and are most likely to lose an egg or two due to the failing structure. So one of my observations showed a picture of intention, design, togetherness and hard work. The other, well, you know, what not to do. The media portrays thriving in our homes as maybe like a physical thing, purchasing, very consumeristic, kind of a pull it all together, do it yourself, everything is about what it looks like. And where I'd agree that our physical environment absolutely impacts our mental and emotional state, I can personally relate to that. What is deeper? What has longevity and can be taken anywhere our foot treads? Is our understanding and revelation of building an inner and outer atmosphere where the Holy Spirit can dwell, move and guide us. And this overflows to our children, to your visitors, to your neighbours and to your community. 
So today, in the few minutes I have, I want to share, I want to pray and I want to speak three truths over your lives and homes today that hopefully will help us all thrive in the places where we live. So these three things are to pursue peace, to let wisdom win and to be guided by the gospel. So let's dive in. Pursue peace. Isaiah prophesied, my people will abide in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places. Peace is this narrative spoken and prophesied over our lives and our homes as believers. But we get to cultivate that, to seek after it and to purposefully pray over the rooms in our home. Peace isn't the absence of noise. I mean, many of us haven't experienced that in our waking hours for many years. The peace God gives is the steady, secure state of knowing he is there, that he is in charge and he loves us. His peace surpasses all understanding, noisy neighbours, restless babies, playful children, the workman's radio. I mean, you can fill in the gap. His peace surpasses What do you want to put in there today? Our Father is the Prince of Peace. And right now you can acknowledge and invite that peace into the rooms of your homes as well as in your hearts. Okay, secondly, let wisdom win. Proverbs 24 says this, By wisdom a house is built and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. We also know that wisdom comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So to let wisdom win, we must allow the word of God to be prominent and prevalent in our homes. Deuteronomy 6 um, says this. I love this Old Testament picture of, of this idea of scriptures. It says these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames of your house and on your gates. Now, you may have heard many faith traditions take this instruction pretty literally and they wear clothes and live in homes that look a lot like the picture painted here in Deuteronomy. Well, we might not live exactly like this today, but the message is to keep God's word, his truth and his guidance central to our spiritual and physical expression of our life. It starts with the heart and then it overflows to our homes and our relationships. So what does the overflow of God's word from your heart look like in your home? Maybe it's conversation, solutions to problems, songs, prayers, scribbled notes on the fridge, framed pictures on the wall, or maybe a huge transfer above the dining room table. I I do love those. If wisdom is to build our home, surely it looks more prominent than the still small voice inside us. How can you express God's truth in your home? Maybe you could pop your ideas in the comments below or even show us a photo of your beautifully framed scripture. So thirdly, we are to be guided by the gospel. In John 3.16, well, you guys know it so we can read it together. It says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And that's John 3, 16. Let the gospel guide you. Let the gospel guide us in our relationships within the home. How do we do this? Well, by first acknowledging that we all need a saviour. Not just once, but every single day. We can practice humility. We can show grace. We can say that we're sorry. Yes, even parents to children. We are in the business of restoring, repairing and rebuilding. Because what we learn within the home becomes the pattern for our lives. And we are homes and streets of imperfect people, saved by grace and working out our salvation 
every day. Our homes must be guided by the gospel. Our thriving in the world and in the workplace starts with where you wake up every day. Our patterns, rhythms and decisions act as an overflow of what's inside us, then are transported wherever we spend our days. My prayer today over every person watching, over every home represented here today, is that you'd firstly be guided by the gospel, that you'd allow wisdom to win and that you become a tenacious pursuer of God's peace. Number six says this, and I want to finish by praying this over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
thank you, Leah, for those amazing, inspiring words of wisdom. There's so much practical teaching to think about and take with us into the days and weeks ahead as we continue to build our lives in the community of faith. Thank you everyone for joining with us online today. And can I remind you that straight after this service, we have the wonderful Mosaic Kids. And later on today, we have Mosaic at six. So have a great day, everyone. And to all our wonderful, beautiful women, happy Mother's Day. Have a great week. Thank you.